I shit the bed here. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the... Wow, I sound like an old man. <clears throat> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Dig Up Podcast. I am Daniel, and this is Mr. Anderson, or Andy. Hello. Um, so, I've been thinking, and, you know, it's been a minute, but I thought, due to the Halloween spirit, I would like to talk about scary video games and or scary video game moments I have had in gaming and or Andy has had in gaming. I will let you lead, Andy, go ahead. Any video game moments you've had in a game that have freaked you out or vice versa. That's a problem, because I can't really remember the time where I was scared. Well, I can really think about that. While you're thinking about that, like... I mean, let me see. For example, what happened to me... Now, me and my brother used to play... Um, we played the game Suffering. And the Suffering was a game for, like, PS2. And we were playing it. And we were, like, constantly playing it, playing it, playing it. We're like, dude, this is a horror game, but it's, like, not that bad. You're in jail. Mm-hmm. We're standing there. And we're in this, like, in-game thing happens. A monster runs across the screen, knocks your jail cell door open, and then the screen, like, pitches... It flip, flips black for a second, and then it's all, like... A red light. Like you can just see the emergency lights. We both just ran out of the room and did not play the game again. That is how creepy that was. Um. Oh yeah. Um. Back when I was like a little kid. Tomb Raider 1. I remember I was running around in a a certain like cave area. Yeah. Ran to an area, ran to a room where I swear it was like hay, like on the ground. Yeah. Out of nowhere, a giant ass bear falls down from the top of this room and like starts clawing my face. And that was pretty scary when I was a little kid. <laughs> See, I had another thing. Not only the, the well. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. You go ahead. I was gonna. There's also gonna be in Terminator two, one as oh. well. The T Rex freaked me out when I was a kid. Just seeing that thing come out from out like out of the darkness. Yeah. That creeped me out as a kid. And I was like, I'm never gonna play this game. Giant ass bear is coming down from the ceiling and the giant ass T Rex which also looks scary as all fuck. Yeah, my and Then again I was like what was it like four? <laughs> my other vivid horror <laughs> memories or fear I guess scratchy cat moments were I mentioned this one to you before, but when I I used to have a Sega when I was younger, and the T Rex, yeah, the T Rex in the Jurassic Park, like mm-hmm. the game loading thing, would always just scare me to death. And yes. even to this day, sometimes when I see the T Rex is like just you know growling growl at people, I still kind of get a little bit like a little bit of spine chill. I don't know why. The T Rex in. The actual, like, Genesis game? Only? Like, yeah, in-game. T-Rex. Just the fact that it's, like, yeah. its face is looking at you, maybe? That's, like, gets me still a little bit, but... Wait, it's looking at the screen. Yeah. yeah, I can see that. But, yeah, no, that thing, that thing kind of mm. scared me as when, when I was a kid as well. I remember I'll turn on the Genesis, right? Yeah. And it would pop up the license screen, like, you know, the game was produced by Arundel License from Sega. Yeah. And I remember when I was a kid, I would just mash the start button. Dude, that theme song, too, adds the fright, though. Because the theme song goes, and I'm like, nope, I'm all right. I would just leave the room. (laughs) Although that, like, like when I was a kid, I was like, this is is cool after a while. Like, at first, when I first saw him, like, it was kind of creepy. Then I'm just like, damn, that's sweet. No, it's a really it's epic theme that. song. Like, to this day, I'm still, yeah. like, in awe of it, because it's a really good theme mm-hmm. song for a Genesis-era video game. Mm-hmm. But, man. You should... The, for the prototype, <clears throat> yeah. it sounds a little bit different, and also hmm. the lightning strike is a lot different. You should probably see that one. I love the cutscene, though, at the beginning. That's cooler. the thing about Genesis-era games that I mm-hmm. love are the weird cutscenes, like the one that they try to... do, like, make an alternate timeline version of the... Jurassic Park incident, 
and they just show the yeah. T-Rex's face in the like in the front of a jeep <laughs> and then all of a sudden the jeep slipped over and then all of a sudden okay so here's something that I've never noticed as a kid <clears throat> yeah it's a gas powered jeep at the very beginning yeah exactly the that's what I was and then out, yeah. when the T-Rex grabs it it becomes a land cruiser and then it becomes a jeep again. <laughs> wait, wait. Yeah, you're right, because the T-Rex does grab it in the cutscene, right? It picks it up and yeah, like, moves it. Yeah, it grabs it, and, like, the whole screen is flashing. If yeah. you pause <clears throat> if you pause the emulator or you just pay attention to it, you'll notice that it's... That it's a Ford the Explorer. The Jeep becomes, yeah, the Ford what Explorer the Land Cruiser. <laughs> Which... Yeah, because I remember yeah. that vaguely, because you hear that because it's like growling, but it's like really dramatic. Yeah, you hear the you hear the two roars, and then you just hear yeah. Frank going, ah. <laughs> That's the funniest thing about that game too, is the fact that anytime Grant takes damage, ah. <laughs> Whenever you did had fall damage, you always hear Grant. Going, Ooh. <clears throat> no, that's a, that's another thing <laughs> that I love about old games is the, how like horribly bad that damage sound was like in Castlevania it's always oof oof <laughs> like yeah. Medusa heads make you so much more enraged when your dude slows down entirely and just goes oof and flies backwards off the map but anyways yeah. unrelated to that Castlevania is kind of a Halloween -y game anyways so kind of to the point but yes. uh, I'm trying to think there's other there's no other like games I I've played that have scared me though Castlevania Symphony of the Night I'm uh the game over screen in particular kind of freaked me out when I was a kid. Just the way that the screen melts. Oh, you know what? Another it one? shows that game over screen. You've seen the Symphony of the Night game over, right? No, I'll look it up when we're done here, but... That's, that's kind of freaky when you think about it. There's another one yeah. I've had. Um, was it Mortal Kombat 4 when you have the game over and if you don't press start oh, you yeah. just get spiked? Mm -hmm. That was that was always anxiety inducing and scary to me. I was playing I was playing MK <clears throat> Gold on the Dreamcast. Yeah. And I'm like you know, the, I just see my character falling through that little shaft thing and I'm like, you know <clears throat> what, what if I don't continue? And then I didn't yeah. continue. You just sit there and, and watch the get slammed. Spiked. Yeah, it's just um I'm just like, Oh, okay. That's that's pretty cool. I mean it makes sense when you think about it. I mean Yeah. If they didn't get spiked at the end it wouldn't really be Mortal Kombat now, would it? <laughs> True. But I can see it being frightening to, I don't know, some, a kid. No, actually, would be if you, another if gaming it. thing I just thought of, speaking Mortal Kombat, it always spooked me, was Goro's lair always looks so creepy to me. Like, even the Genesis sprites, like the eyeballs and oh, stuff, nice. always scared me. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Just the atmosphere of that map alone, and even mm -hmm. the remasters. Still looks really creepy. I always thought that was really cool about Mortal Kombat. They have that like pseudo horror in certain levels and design, especially of the Nether Realm. But still, oh, and Outworld as well. Mm hmm. Oh. Huh. So you know we're talking about certain things. Um, yeah. I there's one thing I remember it. It creeped me out. Oh, what is it called? This is kind of probably kind of shocking, but Primal Rage on the Genesis hmm. it actually scared this living shit out of me. In fact, it scared the living shit out of me until like high school. <laughs> Jeez, how? Just well, first of all, now this is now this is gonna be because of the times. The graphics look realistic. Oh yeah. True. They don't look realistic on the Genesis. They really don't. But yeah, no, the, it looked so real. That kind of like got me when I was a kid. Yeah. I don't know why? Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, the sound effects on the Genesis version, they're so bit crunched. They sound like really weird. Yeah. That's oh, and true. the fact that and the fact that your heart exploded. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty disturbing. They used to freak me out. Because it's just like, you just see the heart explode in the corner and just becomes a bloody mess in the corner. Yeah. I'm like, this is terrifying. And for some reason, like, I think it was because when I was a kid, I ended up repressing, like, a lot of that shit. It yeah. would get me. Like, just seeing a screenshot of the thing back then would get me into, like, the, some kind of frenzy. 
Like, yeah. I'd, like, start freaking out for no reason. Yeah, there was always... There's, I've always been jumpy thank, with games like that. Yeah. Like, like, thank God I'm done with that, you know? <laughs> there was a random PS1 title I owned, Disruptor, mm-hmm. which is, like, based off a movie, I guess, or something. Disruptor? Never seen the movie. But it's, like, a weird FPS, and there's, like, these weird... And it's related to a movie, because I always was afraid yeah. of Donnie Darko because of Frank for some reason. Like, I just never... I Frank Darko. traumatized me as a kid because I was way too young to see the movie and I freaked out. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. anytime anything with horns approaches me in a game, like on Disruptor, yeah. there's like it looks like these like scorpion flying things that have like horns and they flew at me and I was like, hell no, not a fan. Oh, but no Disruptor. Like clone. Yeah, Disruptor is definitely a Doom clone. But in the game, too, in the first level, and this is why it always, mm-hmm. like, got suspenseful and cool for me and creepy, you start off and there's, like, these robots with, like, saw blades that try to come at you, and it's real intense. It's great. Oh. Great game. Under- underrated. I need to re-get it, but... Um, no, there's been Man, a few just... games in particular that have just spooked me like that. Like, Fear there's 1. Something Fear 1 is one, and I want to replay it. I don't know yeah. if I'm going to play it this month or not. But Fear 1 in particular, there's spoilers, but there's a scene where it's towards the end of the game, and like it's the game constantly switches horror, action, horror, action. And there's a part where you're like, oh wow, I'm in this building, everything's going fine. Go over to this elevator shaft, almost sends it flying down. It scared the living crap out of me. <laughs> she just sends an elevator shaft down and like flying away, mm-hmm. and then Like, the end of the game actually forces you to shoot Alma, otherwise you die, and that was really creepy to me, too. Because you just see this, like, ghostly, you know, like, it's more of an adult version of Alma. Yeah. But she's, like, walking towards you, and you have to shoot her or you will die, and it's super creepy and intense. And that game, the end of that game, I'm not going to spoil it, because the end of the game is, like, one of the best scenes I've ever played, but it's just so crazy. That like that got me too. The end of the game, I was like, "Holy shit!" They just ended the game like that, and that's why two and three are so fucked up. Is because of fear one. But okay. I mean, no, there's been plenty of horror games that've got me though. Like, ah, uh, what is it? Resident Evil One always gets me because yeah. it's just so ambient, especially the remaster, anyways, or GameCube one. Mm-hmm. Like the GameCube one, man, it's so creepy. Like, even, I played the Wii version before I played the remasters. Yeah. And I was, like, I was so anxious with that, I just put it down. Like, I borrowed it from Dallas. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, nah, I'm alright. And just put it to the side. Do you feel the same for the HD version, which is just... Um, yes and no. It's, now it's more so of the fact that I have to figure out where I'm going. There is a certain part that always gets me though yeah. is the part with the dogs that always makes me jump because the dogs just jump through the window oh you're talking about when you walk down the corridor yeah the hallway first, like and... yeah the second time and then or whatever when you're running back to the main lobby they just bash through the windows yeah it gets me almost every okay. time um but no resident evil 2 did some stuff like that they did um and this has got me in the resident evil, <gasps> resident evil 2 excuse me the um the angle that a certain way where you see these boards, right? When you walk past an area. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you walk past and you have to backtrack all the way through the RPD, zombies break through the fucking window and it scared the shit out of me. I just hear, BAM! And I'm like, nope! (laughs) I was out. I mean, the crocodile part, legendary, but that got me more than that. Yeah, you're talking about OG. Yeah, yeah. Like the N64 port, but still great. Good, scary stuff. What's it called? I remember being terrified of RE2 as a kid, especially that cover. Bold. Like the PS1 cover? Yeah, with Birkin on it. Is that supposed to be Birkin? Yeah. Like, is it I It's like I a weird zombie like... Birkin with like an eyeball and a knife or something like that. It's kind of weird. Right, hold on, let me. Because. It looks like a, like a 
this regular zombie would like with his hand like clawing at like the written evil tooth thing or something. Also, this part of the podcast is brought to you by the heater behind me. I'm sorry. In advance. The thing is, I can't hear the heater. Like, oh, I'm, maybe Discord's better at so actually concealing it. I can't hear it right now, but I'll Got almost be able, to be able to hear it in the uh, We'll find out. It's fine. Exactly. Um, well, while you're doing that, I'm going to try to think of other um, things I've done yeah, or games I've played. I mean... There's the picture. If you check this card, that's the picture. For example, too. Like, is that supposed to be Birkin? Hang on. Let me see. It doesn't really look like Birkin to me. What the... Um, did I break it? Hang on. Let me see Discord. Where is Discord at? Like, I still don't know what, like... Yeah, what that on the left is definitely Birkin. Yeah, yeah. I actually didn't That's either that. Birkin or, like, Mr. X. But I think it's Birkin. And you can kind of see, like, the mouth is kind of, like, being eaten away. And you can see teeth. Yeah. So, I... A little bit. Know. I don't know. It's either... It looks, it, it looks almost like Marcus. Oh, God. Oh, God. We're slideshowing me. My bad. Shit. I fucked up. I fucked up. <laughs> just <laughs> dig up. And then it shifted over. And it was an awkward just screenshot of me. And like, <laughs> 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 I'm a pro. It's all right. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. To the pro. To the pro. Now that. That's Chaos Theory. Um, that is casting. <laughs> no, actually, another game that got me pretty good was Doom 3. And I know Doom 3 was very thematically creepier than the original, but... Mm -hmm. Doom 3, man. Shit. The I first guess. Pinky Demon fight... Um, the majority of the, like, the first encounters with a lot of demons were really creepy. Yeah. Also, there's plenty of times when you're playing that game where the demons will taunt you and just start laughing creepily, they'll be like, ha 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 ha, and then it'll be like, spawn fucking imps everywhere, and you're like, holy fuck, and then you die, you know, it's crazy, but, I never played Doom 3, but I gotta say, Doom 64 was kind of freaky, with Doom, dude, dark shit, Doom 64 made the pinky demon even creepier, and I didn't think it was possible, they actually gave him arms, but, oh my god, the pinky demon in, in the original, that actually got me a lot, when I first like played through Doom One, mm -hmm. Pinky Demon, dude, Pinky Demon, every fucking time I hear bram bram, I'm like, nope, I'm good. The first time. If I, I hear him growling, I'm fucking out of there. Like the first time I played Doom One, it was on my uncle's computer. He had like yeah. his 301 or um, games disc. And yeah. Share a version of Doom on it, Doom One on it, and I remember yeah. installing that thing on this computer. That, um, uh, the installer had, like, this pretty creepy music with the spider mastermind just, like, walking there. That's cool. And that was kind of, like, like, weird. Like, it kind of got me. Then again, I was, like, I don't even remember. I think I was, like, 9 or 10. Something like that. It makes sense when you think about it. But, yeah, no, it's, it's actually pretty cool. I kind of want to find that again. Because I want to... See it again. Yeah, no, that's another thing. No, there's definitely a lot of horror things I've dealt with when I've played games. Like, are every. Or even the action in Resident Evil games, like Resident Evil 4, yes. the first chainsaw fight always made me, like, just terrified when I first played through it. The first chainsaw fight? What yeah, because when, when the Ganado guy shows up. And if you play mercenary mode after you beat the game, there's a super Ganado who's like three times as tall. Mm -hmm. And he just jumps everywhere and chases you down, and it's super fun and creepy. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, probably one of the scariest games I've played, even though I've pretty much beat myself out of being afraid of it, is Outlast. Yeah, I can see that. And, dude, Amnesia. Actually, Amnesia the Dark Descent. I know a lot of people say, Oh my god, Amnesia, but, yeah. That game, dude. Those fucking... What are they called? Um, whatever. The demon motherfuckers with the ugly mouth? Yeah. Scared the piss out of me. I was in the dark, right? Mind my own business. Okay. I was like, what up? Yeah. And then he just starts walking around. I'm like, fuck that. And he's like, 
whatever, he's making his creepy, or whatever the fuck, and he just starts chasing me, and I'm like, I just ran right out of the door. I left. <laughs> I said, fuck this shit, I'm out. But there's a part in the game where you, I mean, spoilers, but I'm sure eventually you'll play it at some point, maybe. There's a part in the game where they literally force you to get caught by them, and I was like, did I fuck up? Like, what do I, what do I do? Oh, and it was in, I mean, I played it when I got my PS4, because it was a thing, but it was, oh man, that was super creepy. Cause you just literally walk around, and there's like, three or four of them just like, walking all weird as fuck, and then they caught me, and I was like, shit. Mm-hmm. But no, the, yeah. the end of that game is so weird. Like, the game leads you up to such yeah. a certain thing, and then it like, just like, the end of it is so, it's creepy too, but it's like, really weird. Mm-hmm. It's like, ethereal, in a way. Kind of right. like, a battle yeah. with like Shang Tsung or something. Anyways. Mm-hmm. So, to be honest, like you're just giving like examples of like stuff that probably happened like recently. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't really have many things that happened to me recently. The only thing I can really think about is uh, what is it? Doki Doki. <laughs> it's just kind of like it didn't really scare me. It just kind of like made me uneasy, you know. Mm-hmm. That was like the only thing that really got me. Is it because it's because it's like the way the they did it. Yeah. Because it's like really a dating sim, and then it escalates. From what I've heard, I'm not gonna. Yes. I do not want to spoil it for you. You're gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna play a bit. Until Dawn was another <laughs> one. That's another one that really got me. It was really good yeah. though. Because, I mean, again, big spoilers. I don't know. Are you actually gonna play Until Dawn? <sighs> Wait a minute, what what is Until Dawn for? PS4. Is it only PS4? I think so. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. To be honest, I've already seen, you know, the entire game. The whole game, game, probably a few times. Okay, anyways. Yeah, Uh, the whole Psycho twist, I didn't know the Psycho was technically a good guy. And when I was playing it, I was like, this Psycho is creepy as shit. And when I played as Sam, I got caught as, caught by the psycho because I it was one of those don't moves, and I actually fucked up and mm-hmm. I died. I got caught, and I was like, "Oh no!" I was like, "Am I about yeah. to die?" And then luckily she survived because it was really Josh the whole time. Who was so into his thing, he ends up killing one person if you let him. I know. I know. I was so mad by my last playthrough. The fact that I tried to. Or I tried to shoot what's her name and then she just let me die. <laughs> I was like, oh my god. That was a bad follow through. But um anyways, like Dan, Until Dawn really burns you. Like it's a good horror game in the way where I mm-hmm. with all the decisions it can burn you so bad where you're like, I tried to save her but I died. <laughs> like it's so weird. It makes you like think outside the box in that way. I love it. But I still don't understand the whole totem thing. It's like, how, um, like, like, I know they're trying to show the future, but they know, some of them weird. are warnings. Like, it's 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 probably something to actually do with Indian culture. I don't know, or not, you know what I mean? Not Indian, Native American culture, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, I always thought it was really cool and creepy. Mm-hmm. But oh man, the Wendigo is really scaring me though. Wendigos, like, once the Wendigos actually show up when you're in the caves, that, like, oh, yeah. escalates the game, like, by a thousand percent. And the VR game, and this is something that, this is another relating to horror things that make me jump and freak out. When you play the VR game, it puts you on a rail immediately. Mm-hmm. And if yep. you turn to the right, there's a Wendigo that jumps right in your face. <laughs> and it scares me every fucking time. So when I have the VR headset on, I just look to the left. <laughs> I just look left, let it attack me. I'm all right. I hear it, which still makes me jump half the time, but still. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty sure I haven't beaten it yet. But I'm pretty sure there's a chapter with Wendigos in it. I'm not prepared for that at all. You but should that, play that. <laughs> that game, there's a um, nurse boss fight in that game, and it scared the shit out of me because the nurse would like, she's like a ghost nurse. She she would like yeah. wave around and then teleport right to your face and attack you and it was oh my god, that's why VR horror games are underrated, because even in a game where it's simple carnival ride shoot everything, like it's still super creepy. 
Mm. But there's another one I'm trying to think of that's like that. Oh, Resident Evil 7 in VR. That's even creepier. Welcome to the family, son. <laughs> like, I played Chris's stuff, which is more action-oriented. Yeah. The molded scared me out of my skin. I literally heard... <laughs> whatever the molded noise. Insert here. Oh, God. And it just jumped down from the ceiling, and it was right in my face, and I was not ready for that. Yep. But, like... Mm-hmm. Yeah, welcome... The whole... Baker stuff too in VR? Not fun. I did the car fight in VR. It was intense as fuck. Oh my god. Can't he get into that car and run you over with it? Um, yeah, he can run you over with it, but he can also, I think if, no matter what happens, he does eventually take control of it. Yeah. Because he goes, I'm going to take you for a ride. And then he just gets in the car and goes all nuts. But, oh yeah, that's when you're like in it as well, right? And he like yeah. bashes. But no, the hardest part in side. VR is definitely the fight with Mia. Which I forgot. I forgot what that. And also, it's was. super creepier in VR because Mia is the chainsaw fight in the attic. Okay. But yeah, you like okay. you go in VR, you walk up to the ladder, and you walk pretty much all the way up to the window, and then she hops through it because she's crazy. And then, bam. And then, walk through the family, son. And VR is creepier, too. <laughs> but then, like, you know, the dinner stuff. The dinner stuff that's, you know, you, it's first person, yeah. but it's less creepy because you can look away. When you're playing VR, yeah. it's like, you look away, but, like, you're it feels like you're at the table, and it's even more disgusting in that way. So, VR is definitely a force I want to reckon more. Like, they have an Exorcist game in VR, which I should totally play if I don't, you know, chicken out, but... Do you, wait, are you like the one mm. performing the exorcism in that? Yeah. That would be, that would be terrifying. When you Dude, yeah, it. super creepy. Like you have to take out your cross and like use it and holy water and shit. Not a fan. And then you're probably going to get like destroyed by demons because yeah, why not? Well, they made <laughs> a um, VR game. <laughs> they made a paranormal activity VR game too. And I think that would be super creepy, but also really fun. I don't know. I might have to actually yeah. like man up and play VR horror games more often, but I don't. Because you had enough said. Yeah, if you had <clears throat> um, what's it called, Alien Isolation on PC, and you managed to connect your like thing to the PC or whatever, and obviously your PC would run it, which I'm sure it won't run VR. You could have tried Alien Isolation VR mod, and played that in VR. There is a way to set it up, like the PSVR to the. PC, I forgot. It's like a weird yeah. app or something, but yes, I'll have to try but it the problem, the problem is your computer's graphics card is not fast enough. You need yeah. a really powerful one. I'm probably better off getting a Quest or something and trying it that way. Which, eh, not, you Maybe. can't really play like certain games. I know there's a horror game on Quest, which is supposed to be scary, but no, um, I mean. No, I'm trying to think of other stuff that's really, like, spooked me. I mean, I've always been afraid of games that, like, Doom 3 did this a few times, too, where it it forces you to walk into the room that's flashing and has blood and everything else. Like, yeah. when a ho- that's that's what people don't understand. People that don't play video games don't understand. Is you can watch a horror movie and you can hide yourself, you can mute the movie, you can do whatever you want. You can't avoid a horror game. You can't do that. It's not possible. You have to walk into whatever is on fire or whatever. You have to fight it. Yeah. So. You can. Although, to be honest, you can, though. You can check it out. You You can. How you do it? What? You want to know how you do it? How? You pass it off to your friend. I've done (laughs) that. I've done that. (laughs) Five Nights at Freddy's. I've done that. Um, but yeah, I know. I was there. No, I've done that to my cousin as well. I was like, I I was sitting back there laughing at him when he died because I wasn't playing because I wasn't scared when he was playing. Um, oh, but, well, let me see. There's another one I just thought of, but I lost it. No, there's something else I played. Oh, Apple? Evil Within. The Evil Within. I never beat it, but a lot of that game really got me. And that game is... I need to thing. beat that game, actually. Maybe I'll play it for stream soon. We'll see, but... Um, the Evil Within 
there is a boss in that game which literally is so fucking creepy and it is probably one of the scariest bosses I've ever fought it's like a spider demon thing it's like a chick but she's like a spider that like spawns out of blood and she's screaming when she spawns in and then she just chases you with like all of her fucking legs and it's super fucking not fun and yeah, arachnophobia. <laughs> like I have arachnophobia, but that's not even why it's creepy. It's because she like, there's a boss fight with her way later, but like she's like creepily breathing. She's like, <sighs> <Yeah>. and she's <sighs> just like chasing you. And like when you have to fight her, it's way worse. Is here's but. the thing though? Is he like screeching and screaming too? Oh no! When she spawns in, she's like, <laughs> it's like no. I'm alright. But no, when she spawns in the first time, you just have to run away. I mean, you can yeah. kill her, but you, like, uh, odds are you want to run away. So when you're playing that, of course your main character, because it's a horror slash action dramatic game like Resident Evil 4, yes. Yes. your dude like stumbles around like a fucking idiot, and it's, it makes <laughs> it way creepier. But no, the, that game is so well done. Super underrated. Like, there's parts... There's parts of that game where I'm like... They're like, the beginning. Another part where, like... This one... You get away from this bad guy. Or this, like, butcher. Mm -hmm. And then... He turns on this switch, and you're in a room with a bunch of saw blades coming around everywhere, and you have to slide away, and then you slide into a pool of blood. <laughs> it's super disturbing, but creepy. And, like, there's a lot of times in that game where... The game just flips you on your end, you know? Yeah. And there's, like, scary shit like that. But, man. And, like, the zombies are, like, weirdly kind of, like, specters in a way, where, like, they have, like, bright eyes and shit. It's kind of creepy and an yeah. interesting design choice. But, man, that dude with the chainsaw, that dude's really creepy, too. And you don't, when you first play the game, you can't fight him at all. You just have to sneak around him. And I remember hiding in the locker in the game for like 30 minutes, just sitting there not, not knowing what to do because I didn't know where he, was, where he was at all. I didn't know yeah. what his route was. I didn't know any of that. So I was just sitting there waiting for him to go by, and I didn't know when he was by because the dude would just kind of like, he sounded so loud that I was like, where the fuck is he? And I just hear... Rant, rant, rant. And I'm like, stop. stop Just guy. stop. <laughs> but like, that that and is a game, one of my top horror games I've ever played. Or I've ever played. Mm. For sure. But, man. I, mean, I really man. need to play more horror games. I, I do too. Now that I think about it. I mean, I, I need to beat more, that... actually, but... One horror game I really want to play is... What was it? Eternal Darkness on the GameCube. Me too. I've heard that's a really good one. That's a really good horror. No, game. actually, um, Silent Hill 2 and 3 are really good from what I've played. But I haven't gotten that yeah. far in either one of them yet, really. But Silent, Silent Hill 3 is real creepy. Silent... Like... 3, I think, starts off better than 2. There's like re HD remakes of those games, right? Yeah. If there are, then I might have to look into it because... Um, PS3. I was, I was thinking... Ooh, actually, yeah. Yeah. I have a PS3. <laughs> yeah, that's the one I got for 360 was the HD collection, 2 and 3. And then I got um, Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 and Peace Walker as well. Around that time. Yeah, um, I was going to be like... I can't. I was gonna say I can't play two and three because they're probably PS2 games, and my PS3 can't play PS2 games. But now, now I might look into that. Actually, actually shout out to and never really done shout outs in the podcast, but another horror game in my top five at the current moment is Resident Evil Three. And yes, it's very action packed, action, action, action. But okay. Resident Evil Three is so well done. It takes everything that's great about 2 and makes it harder, creepier. I mean, you actually feel more so like you're in zombie apocalypse because there's so many zombies in that game. Yep. And Nemesis. Man, Nemesis is so scary. 
I've never fought something that overpowered where I just ran away from it half the time. <laughs> and the fact this that he can sense. shoot rockets down the hallway at you when you're playing in that. Insane. Yeah, I mean, I can see that. there's the common joke we make where his two lines are roar and stars, but that motherfucker, <laughs> Nemesis, is one of the scariest things I've ever fought. Yeah, I can see that. Like, even in the way later in the game, he's like a deformed blob, but he's still scary as shit. Well, That's like um, Birkin be... at the end of 2 as well. Mm -hmm. It would be amazing if they remade RE3 like they did with RE2. Actually, Just yeah. Like, like, amplify Nemesis. That's another game, Resident Evil 2. Playing through that, that game is a billion times scarier than the N64 version. Even the simpleness of just the zombies in the, you know, the RPD, like, main office room. Mm -hmm. The fact that you're playing with just a flashlight, that game is so scary. And then, I don't even want to talk about Miss X going give it to you. Jesus. <laughs> I've never felt I'm more of like a so. panic attack in a game until I played RE3, but he's so scary. He just shows up and you hear... And then he just punches you in the face. Yeah, you just hear Mr. X, and he's like, hello, time to fuck you up. So Mick, like... I've noticed, like, everybody calls the tyrant Mr. X. <laughs> like, everybody. Well, that's what it, that's technically his mm, canon like name. Nickname. Yeah. The but canon like, name is just tyrant. I mean, yeah, but Which is, there's a, they call him Mr. X because he's point. different than Tyrant from RE1. That's why everybody calls him Mr. X, if that makes sense. Yeah. And he has a bowler hat, and X going to give it to you. But... God, that mod is so stupid. I want it. But, yeah, just, like, the end of that game, like, everything. Birkin's way creepier. Um, The plant monsters, they look like shit in the second, like, the N64 version. We're not scary. Pretty sure they look even worse on the uh, P on the uh, uh, PS1 version. Oh All yeah, all the jaggeds. But yeah, oh, well, I was like when I played through that part in RE2 in the like Leon A, I never beat Claire B because I was a pussy. Yeah. Because because when you when you play Claire B, five minutes into the game, X go and give it to you. I'm like, nope. I beat Leon A. I beat the game. We're done here. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you're talking about... Uh, the RE2, original, no, original. Oh, original, original. Yeah. Oh, okay. But anyways, going back to the point there, you play the game, and it's like the plant monsters, so creepy. They look like... They're like zombies, because they can, like, see a skull there and, like, empty eye sockets, and then they have those mouths that can just clamp on you, like, they kind of remind me of those creepy... Yeah, kind of reminded of the creepy plants from uh, Jumanji a little bit. Yeah, the Venus Fletcher. I'm pretty yeah. sure that's what he's talking about. Yeah, also that man. Jumanji kind of traumatized me a little bit as a kid. Those fucking plants. But um, The th thing is, I mean, I've seen some of Jumanji, not all of it, because I saw it in elementary school, and you never finished a movie in elementary school, or any school, really. You never mm, finished a movie. I, I fell asleep during... Uh, Pearl Harbor, but <laughs> so I've never actually finished it. But yeah. I was Pearl very tired. Harbor. Are you talking about the uh, the Michael Bay movie? Yeah, I think so. It was the one with Ben Affleck in it. I think you're talking about the Michael Bay movie, which anyway, I've heard that movie was really boring. I've heard and... it's good, but I just I was already tired because I didn't really get much sleep. I don't really I haven't improved on that as I got older, unfortunately, fam. But um, yeah, I was in Mr. DeBosny's class and we watched the movie, and I was like, "All right, I'm just gonna put my head down." And then I like lifted my head up, and it was like about almost the end of the class, and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah, it's my but... copy. Um, I didn't really hear good things about this movie. I did hear that it got um, it has a lot of ex explosions though. No, I. So what I want to do soon enough, and I'm not going to probably get it in time for Halloween, but I want to play the Saw games for the channel, 
because of the run through 60. Mm -hmm. um, I did play yeah. Saw 2, the demo for it, and Saw 1's demo as well. Those yeah. games are very creepy and fun. Um, so. One of the game is more of a... Like, one game is has horrible controls. I know. Like, and it's just terrible. I forgot which one it was. I, I think, think it's it the second one. Second, yeah, I think it was the second one. Where they, like, decide to just... Fuck everything, everything good up. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> but no, there's a few... Uh, there's a few things in particular, like, um... Just there's a few games that have gotten me. Like even Destiny, like the beginning of Destiny had horror elements Destiny. and it was really cool. Wait, wait, wait. Destiny as in loot shooter Destiny? <laughs> yeah. Um there's parts in like the beginning when you're like you have like no guns pretty much and the fallen mm -hmm. attacks you and it's all like dark as shit and it's really creepy and it's fun. Like games any game can dive into horror even vaguely. Mm -hmm. And I love that about games. And then there's games like even Halo. Halo, man. There's Halo the whole, one, the flood. I yeah, was the say whole that. flood scene still yeah. gets me pretty good. Mainly because yeah, the flood is fucking annoying, but still really creepy. God. I literally, I I've never wanted a shotgun more in my life. You want to know what's even scarier? What? When you're playing that game co-op on Legendary. Oh yeah, not fun. Then one person dies, it's back to the <clears throat> beginning, man. That yeah, was terrible. No. That was annoying, okay. <laughs> but yeah, the flood, even in Halo 3, were really creepy. Because they come back almost every game. Mm -hmm. Even, well, 4, no. But no. the thing is, with Halo 1, like, around the time, like... Oh, the flood were a total surprise in the game. Yeah, like, you just see those silhouettes, like the darkened silhouettes, like, staring at you, and then they run away. And then next thing you know, you're getting attacked by the flood monsters. Like the, yeah. I think it's human flood form. It's, it's like the Halo game instantly shifted over to Alien, which I love about that game. Like, mm -hmm. it's so good. The flood just shows up, and you're like, holy shit, this game just went became a horror game for a minute. And, like, the little spider flood, whatever the fuck, little pod floods, those creep me out a lot, too. Oh, the infection so forms. Just, yeah. They just crawl around a little bit, and you're like, holy shit, what the fuck? And then it would just, like, jump at you, and you're like, what the fuck is this thing? I remember but, um, I yeah. literally would just run through those things at a certain point. I'm like, I'm just wasting my ammo on these things. I could Exactly, just got the ammo. energy sword and just forms. swipe, 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 swipe. I would but, um, a lot of times walk through them and mm. shoot at, like, the uh, elite or human flood forms, because those are more... Uh, Oh yeah, human no, floods are they're more horrible. of a threat. They're more of a threat because they can actually smack you. Or I don't know if it was Halo One or Halo Two, but one of them, they could actually still hold pistols or plasma rifles. Yeah. So they could still they could shoot at you. And yeah, those are just a more threat than the thing that jumps at you, decreases your shields a little bit, and then explodes. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you know what, I will say, another diverging horror thing I just thought about, not really diverging, but um, another <laughs> horror thing I thought about, I was playing, um, and this is my first playthrough of Dino Crisis, I was yep. playing that, and not only was the first raptor scene super scary, because you're like in the middle of, you know, middle of nowhere outside the building, Yep. raptor shows up, like but then like, broken fences. hours later, I broke the game, and I thought it was super hilarious. So, like, it's just funny how the game the game can have funny moments like that, too, where, like, I tricked a rapper into running in the laser field repeatedly. Oh, God. And I was just laughing. I was like, you stupid idiot. And you just hear, Rawr! Smack! Rawr! It was, it was It was perfect. But, like, that game is super creepy. Yeah. Kind of confusing with all the... Because it's got a different um, way to combine things and stuff. Mm -hmm. And, like, the design is a bit different, but it's good. I do like some of the things in that game, like... Um, yeah. That? Like how... Uh, actually, how the combining worked in that game. And also how, like, 
you had a whole bunch of other status elements that you could have, mm -hmm. have like... Yeah. I mean, it was annoying, but the bleeding status ailment was actually pretty cool, and it made sense when you think about it. I mean, you're getting slashed and cut up by these things, so yeah. it makes sense that you'd start, you know, bleeding, obviously. But one thing, the one design choice in that whole game that I still find odd to this day... Yeah. ...was the fact that you had lives. Yeah, that is pretty weird. You had lives. You're, you, had, you were limited by the number of continues, which are just your lives. It didn't really make much sense. No, it's um... It's like, RE2 and RE3 didn't have that. No. They just had to load your save, because you fucked up. Mm -hmm. No, um... There's a couple other... There's one thing in another action game that I remember that was pretty horror-esque that got me as a kid. So I was young, and I was like, Wow, Metal Gear Solid, never played this. And then I, um... Ah, oh, God. I played and got to the beginning of the Psycho Mantis part. And the beginning of Psycho Mantis is um, super creepy. When he's messing with your controller? No, no, not that. He turns Meryl against you, and it's super fucking creepy as shit. Oh, oh that, that. That got me he... really bad. Because I was like, what the fuck is that? Why is she evil? And I didn't know how to do anything, so she just kept shooting me, and I died. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I'm yeah. not... I need to wait a few years to play this game, because I don't know what just happened. I'm traumatized a little bit. <laughs> and the thing is, you don't uh, even see Psycho Mantis. No. Like, you don't even know he's doing that. And yeah, no, she just like, has that like creepy headache, and then she just you know you have to shoot her actually, yeah. or be, no you have to if knock remember, her out. That's what it you is. You have to knock her out like with your, you can't shoot Kicking her, her because yeah. you're gonna kill her. Yeah, I think you just punch her <clears> until <throat> she gets knocked out. And then so yeah, yeah Psychomantis pops up and he's like, I'm gonna read your thoughts. Yeah. And then he tells you that you like playing Castlevania because you have a save of Cynthia in the night, <laughs> which I remember. Yeah. Um. My brother just played Symphony of the Night like on the PlayStation memory card which yeah. had uh, Metal Gear Solid save on it. Just so that Psycho Mantis could say that he you know, he saw the Castlevania there. Oh. <laughs> no, there it's was actually really cool when you think about it. No, my last I thing I thought of, and I'm probably gonna wrap it up with this one, but mm -hmm. I did a um I did finally play through Resident Evil Zero a little bit. I played it for a while when I had an Xbox. And there's a part, it's just super fucking random. Because it's Resident Evil, you go into a church. And you're like, oh wow, uh -huh. look, it's a church. There's a fucking bat. It's a bat boss. A big ass fucking oh, yeah, bat. That thing. And that I was thing, like, I don't understand what's going on. But um. like that boss fight, and then there's like this gigantic fucking centipede. Both of those were, like, scary as fuck the first time I fought them, yeah. and then, like, the bat didn't take much effort. I think I died maybe once. But the bat was, like, I was really confused, because it was flying around real fast, and it was really creepy. But, no, yeah. the, the centipede was creepier, because you're, like, you see this, like, weird, like, pool thing, and you go down there, and you're, like, I got this. And then all of a sudden, Rebecca gets kidnapped, and then you're playing as Billy... And you have to free her, like, kill the thing to free her. Yeah. And it's super intense. But. Sounds very interesting. No, the, and then the last thing, because I said last thing, but keep coming up with ideas. This is officially the last thing. Um, or no, sorry, there's two more. I just thought of one more last thing, actually. That's even creepier. <laughs> and this is something that Trump still oh. gets me a little bit. But no, um, back to Resident Evil 1... And it's comical as it is scary. The first zombie in Resident Evil 1, like the remake, always mm -hmm. got me. And then the, it's followed by, if you leave the room immediately, the, ah, it's a monster! And then Barry's like, I'll get it! <laughs> bam! Bam! And he shoots a magnum at it, it dies, then you walk down the hallway and it's back. But it's just yeah, funny. The thing, I remember when I was playing it, you are like, do that, do that. Like, don't kill it, just run into the other room. And I yeah. did that, and the, the voice acting is just Ah, oh, it's a monster! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Stand back, Jill! It's <laughs> great. And then there's, um... But yeah, Resident Evil 4. Back to my... One of my game... Games of... Best games of all time. The Regenerators. 
The regenerators yeah. in Resident Evil 4 have always been so creepy to me. They're not as creepy to me now, but back when I only had a Wii and Resident Evil 4 was the scariest game I've ever had. Yeah. Yep. I did, I did think of one more thing, different game, because my brain just works this way. Um, so Resident Evil 4. Regenerators, you know, yes. super fucking creepy. They breathe weird. They're like... <laughs> Like, they read like that, but, like, weirdly... I don't even know how to fucking explain it. And regenerators are super fucking creepy. Creepy fucking bastards. They have these mouths that look... I don't even know. Just not fun. And you have to, like... The only way you can kill them is by shooting their weird plagas inside their body, and you have to get a special scope to even see it. Like, infrared. Yeah. Yep. But when I first played it, there's a thing you're not supposed to do, and if you grab that infrared scope, you have to kill the regenerator that's in there, or you can't get out of the freezer. Sounds so you get trapped in the freezer until you kill it. So now when I play that part of the game, I say, fuck that, I'm leaving, and I just leave. Yeah. But no, there's regenerators later on that have, like, spikes, which doesn't make any sense, but they, yeah, they just... They're called, like, Iron Maidens, and they literally just... Shh, spikes just come out of, of their bodies. Yeah. Because of course they are. But, um, no, there's another game, underrated game I need to get for PC, and I think it's on GOG, but, or no, it might be on GOG, I don't know. It's on Steam, but Obscure the Aftermath. It's a very Steam. cheesy horror game. It's got all the tropes of, we're college kids, let's party, oh, let's have sex, you know, all that bullshit. Oh, God. <laughs> um, it's, but there's these creepy monsters. There's this creepy monster slash like zombie things. And the 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 thing that causes the zombies is like I guess I don't know, I read in the docs in the game they said like unprotected sex causes I don't what? know. It's really stupid. Unprotected sex causes people to become the zombies when they're what? Oh, I, I don't know. Sound like can't kill when you so said st- that. I don't know. <laughs> propane and propane except whatever. Just it's, yeah. And it's like, why is that a thing? But, like, the, it's these weird flowers. Mm-hmm. And these flowers are linked to, like, turning people into zombies. Which is kind of weird because that's what Resident Evil did. With the progenerator virus. Like, they have these mm-hmm. plants that they eventually use to make the T-virus. And the G-virus yes. and everything else. But the plants were originally found in Africa. Which makes Resident Evil 5 loop everywhere else. It's kind of cool. But, yeah, it's all fucked up. And Obscure the Aftermath is a game you need to play at some point. It is a zombie game where a lot of the beginning of the game, you're using a baseball bat and smacking the shit out of things, and it's a lot of fun. Why does this sound like Dead Rising for some reason? It is kind of like that, but it's a, um... (laughs) It's like a weird third-person horror game where you walk around with... A potentially a co-op buddy, which is why I should get it on Steam, because we could play it Parasec, I think. I'll have to double check. Otherwise, I'll just buy it for you or something. But anyways. Um, but anyways, it's such a fucking good game. And I never beat it. And I always would play co-op on Wii and stuff. And it was one of the few games on the Wii where I would, like, have a blast playing it, because it was a co-op horror game, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. But... I'll oh, get the first screen, game as well. All these split screen? Hmm. Yep. Well, yeah, we definitely so have to play that then. Parsec, dude. That means Parsec. But, yeah, definitely recommend that game, so I'll have to pick it up soon. Maybe, uh, we'll see what happens, but maybe before Halloween. I don't know yet. Before the Halloween. I got a Doki Doki. I got to do a bunch of other shit. Maybe Wednesday, we'll see. Um, <clears throat> but anyways... I believe this has been the Dig Up Podcast. It's been a last. I've been ranting a lot about video games, and I keep popping around with new horror ideas that I remember. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Also, definitely recommend The Suffering as well if you guys haven't played PS2-era games. The Suffering is like a weird game where all of the enemies in the game are... Like, the design of them is inspired by how they were executed. And they're yeah. like things. So like one dude was lethal injection, so he has needles sticking out of his eyes and shit. It's really creepy. Oh, God. Yeah. So horror games. Not disturbing whatsoever. 
Uh, in Outlast, you may or may not have DLC where you can get your balls almost chopped off. You guys have well, a good that... one. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really yeah, sucked the end of that one. <laughs> Thank you guys for oh listening. Um, it's been Dig Up Podcast. Hopefully, this episode has been super crazy and fun for you guys. I'm still fighting a cold because I am endlessly in this struggle, like do or it's Bethesda so was with Doom for a while. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. And hopefully, we have more episodes coming sooner than later. That's really up to yes. me and my laziness, <laughs> but we'll figure it out. How do I get out of this thing? Oh, here we go. All right, now let me find the thing. We're going to see a white screen for a minute, and bye-bye, guys. It's been a blast.